everyone welcome back to my channel today I'll be showing you how I made this cute little upcycled tin can it's a decoration it's a pencil holder toothbrush holder paintbrush holder if you drill holes in the bottom it could be a plant holder so whatever your imagination tells you to use it for I will be showing you how I made it so if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, the first thing that I started with was gl adding glue to the can and layering on one layer of a napkin. Here this has a hole because I removed the uh, mold, the clay mold of the angels because the angel face was distorted. So I removed it and some of the napkin came off so here I am just touching it back up and I'm going to remake the mold because I didn't like it <laughs> um, and I just use cornstarch for mine because that's what I have handy sometimes during the weather you know if it's really dry I'll use baby oil on the mold to help with the release so you could just use either one whatever works for you Sometimes if I do too much of the cornstarch, it'll make the clay get a little hard and dry. So I'll go ahead and spray it with water, which you'll see me do when I put it back into the plastic wrap. And I keep what I, the clay that I'm working on in the plastic wrap because that just really keeps it from drying out and I don't have to keep opening up the container that has the full brick of clay in it. Here you see I'm just trying to smooth out the back side of the mold to keep it flat because you don't want a bumpy mold, you know, it'll just give you raised areas. Uh, so I use different tools, whatever works. And I just carefully start trying to pull out the mold, well, the clay from the mold, I guess you would say. I've, had, I've tried this like four or five times just trying to get it right, so don't get upset if it doesn't work the first time. Like I said, my angel face got all distorted, and I tried to fix the eyes, and he got really evil eyes. So <laughs> I had to pull it off the can because I knew I'd have nightmares looking at that. <laughs> so I do let it dry a little bit so that I won't fall apart when I lift it up. Uh, but I don't let it dry a lot because I still need to mold it around the can. So you saw me smooth out the edges with some water on my finger. Because uh, you'll have some pokey things. And then I'll add the glue to it. Smooth it out a nice smooth layer or thin layer. And then I just try to center it on the can where I like it. With this wood glue... You do have time to readjust it, whereas like if you used instant glue or hot glue, you really won't have time to lift it back up and readjust. I did dry it on its side, like you see the medallion on the can there, because I didn't want it sliding down, because sometimes they'll do that, especially if the mold is heavy or I added too much glue. So here I'm just making some of the rope medallion, not medallions, I see the medallion on the side. I'm making some of the ropes to go around the edging. I smooth the edges again with water and I apply a thin layer of glue to attach it to the can. I did start using um, art glitter glue because it has a thin nozzle and it did work and it held the, the clay in place. I believe I used that on the medallion can in the other video. Yeah, it's still morning for me and my tongue's not working yet. <laughs> so as you know, air dry clay will shrink when it dries. I never know how much it's going to shrink. So I try to make a good connection when I do the edges. Or I'll connect the edges and in a little bit you'll see how I fix where it did leave a big gap and it's an easy fix 
you know, like I said, little cracks don't bother me. It just helps age the piece and give it, you know, a more antique feel. But it did have some, you know, like a millimeter or two gap. So I did touch it up with some extra clay. And I'm about to show you how I fixed that. Okay, uh, this one looks like it is dried. I added on two little ropey edgings. And I'm looking at it, and you, like I said, it, air dry clay does shrink up a bit. So I didn't get that long enough. So I'm going to fix that because that looks a little bad. So I'm just going to get a teensy bit of my clay. And I'm probably not going to get it perfectly. But at least it won't have this big old gap. And I just kind of squish it in. And you just play with it. I'm not looking for perfection. And I've got my little water here. Let's see how that works. Might be a little extra. Work that out of the way. Just trying to follow the pattern a bit. And that's okay with me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just a little touch up. Okay, so after all the clay dried, I went ahead and gave it a coat or two of the black gesso just to cover it all up and make it easier for the paint to adhere. And I'm going to be adding my colors now. So the first color I painted it with is a phthalo blue, and that pretty much covered the black. Um, I may have left a few areas still black just to give it a nice little effect. And here I'm just dabbing on. I'm trying to match the color from my reference picture just a little bit. And I'm going to dab it here and there with, you know, di different sponges um, until I get the coverage that I like. And again, I didn't cover up all of the phthalo blue. I wanted this multicolor just to give it more dimension. And I think that's what they did in the reference picture. And I did learn to not stress over getting it exactly like the reference picture, but enough to where I'm happy with it. I come in with my next color, which is a cobalt blue. And I'm just, again, putting splotches here and there. I'm not trying to get full coverage anywhere. It's some light shades and light and darker, you know, areas. What am I trying to say? The thickness of the paint so that you can see through it and you can see the other colors, you know, showing through. I do eventually switch to a brush, I believe, to get, well, maybe that's with the silver paint coming up. <laughs> I just watched this and I already forgot what I did. Because um, I'm going to go over it with a silver paint. Just to give the, uh, the clay areas more definition and let them pop from the background. I think I start with the sponge and I'm just putting very little paint on the sponge because I don't want glops everywhere. I just want like a kind of a dry brush effect going over the the clay areas just to make them stand out. And so I think I start with the sponge and then I have to switch over to the brush because the ropes are a little thin and I didn't want to get the silver on the background area. I just wanted the clay molds to pop and stand out. So after I use the silver paint, I do give it a couple of coats of varnish and then I go over it again with Deco Art Metallic Silver Spark. It's a paste 
if I do that before I put the varnish on, the varnish tends to remove it. So I do the uh, paste last and it'll harden and you won't be able to rub it off. But it does give it that extra shine that I like. So I don't know if that just happens with me. <laughs> I don't think it happens when I use Mod Podge, but it definitely happens when I use that Varathane varnish. So I'll I'll save the uh, the paste for last and go over it. And here I'm just going over it again and again in different areas until I get enough silver to where I like it um, and where it really pops from the background. So just take your time, have fun. You know, everybody's different as to how much of the background they want to show through and how much they want highlighted. But I really wanted the silver to pop. So there, I'm pretty happy with the silver coverage. And I'm going to do the varnish. And here I'm just showing you have different options of what you can use. You can use the matte, you can use the gloss, Mod Podge. So just have fun and thanks for watching.